Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, it only takes one small action to make real change in the world, and, uh, well, you know what? If you're within the sound of our voice, then uh, you must be in the seats with once more. As always, uh, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals and pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, influences, and so very much more in a light and conversational fashion, because that's just how we like to do things around here. And if you like how we do things around here, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you do. You're listening to the podcast right now. Uh, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. You can find us over at uh, Spotify, uh, Apple, Amazon, Google. It's all good. And you can find every single one of our episodes archived over at our YouTube channel. Uh, plus, it'd be great if you could follow us on social media, too. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at either at In The Seats or at It's Podcast One for all sorts of updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, In The Seats, that's the A, for all the latest and greatest, uh, well, reviews, news from the world of television, film, festivals, video on demand, anything we can think of, really. We love talking about the moving image, and we love it when you pay us a visit to read about it. So please stop on by. On this episode, our ever-expansive Hot Docs coverage is continuing as we talk with director Cody Westman with his world premiere of Hell or Clean Water, which uh, will be a part of the Hot Docs Festival, which kicks off tomorrow. Please go visit uh, them at hotdocs.ca for any sort of info about tickets and anything else you want to know about. They have an absolutely fantastic lineup, which I do recommend you check out. But... uh, this film is about, uh, well, it's about a diver in uh, in uh, Newfoundland who uh, you know, devotes himself, literally by himself almost, to uh, to clean up uh, the harbors in Newfoundland, which are which are littered with garbage. And when you when you in, it's it's just it's shocking to see how much pollution we have wrought on ourselves over the years in in such a beautiful place like Newfoundland as he's pulling out uh you know ton after ton of garbage quite literally it's it's an amazing thing and he's doing that at his own financial ruin and uh and it's one of and you know we see him you know trying to get help people trying to you know trying to apply for grants trying to sort of bring awareness to to what's been going on in the harbors and the the amount of just junk that is sitting in the water that is you know destroying their fish which is destroying their livelihood because there's a lot of fish there's a lot of people who thrive on uh, fishing in newfoundland and and it's an important thing and, and cody does a fantastic job in this film and really sort of highlighting just uh how gross it, it really kind of is on the ocean floor and it's something that we need to do something about and uh we talked with cody about that and just you know how he sort of kicked off this story and uh you know what he learned along the way and it's a it's a fun talk that we had with him and uh i hope you enjoy it because i know i did and i I definitely recommend that uh, you check out uh this film which is like i said playing hot docs uh, starting tomorrow online so uh go support some great documentary cinema and enjoy our conversation with cody westman no, I mean obviously, congratulations on the film, and I mean, I, I was, I was struck by just the, pardon my French, but I was struck by the amount of shit in the fucking harbors. I know, I know. Like, walk me through you sort of discovering this story and going, okay, this is this is going to be a film. Yeah. Uh, well, I do um, corporate and commercial work a lot, you know, for okay. a living, and and so uh, Sean had got a hold of me, looking to get a price on. A video to sort of document his efforts you know to to date and try and get more support and uh the line that really struck me was in the first year i've removed over fifteen thousand pounds of trash by myself and i said uh damn that's a story you know and um you know we we were well i gotta be careful to be to be honest we're we're fully in production on a different film with the documentary channel about a Canadian band that shall remain nameless. Okay. Um, because they wouldn't play ball even after we'd been shooting for a year. Um, and we weren't able to sign the, the deal and keep going. So we potentially owed doc channel a lot of money 
And I said, listen, can I pitch you another idea? Because I've got this guy who I think is really inspiring. And it's probably a more important film anyway. And um, and they let us, you know, explore it. They they even gave us a little money to go out and shoot. And, you know, we came back with like a 10 minute teaser and everybody loved it. And, and we just uh, basically just changed the dates and names on the paperwork and just just rolled right <laughs> into this scratch, yeah. <laughs> yeah literally and it, it it was just it honestly it's worked out um much better and uh i think it's yeah it's a more important story anyway no i mean walk i guess walk me through like i mean I'm, obviously he was on board for this but i mean i can imagine especially from your end there's you probably gonna have to do a lot of research on something like this just in terms of diving into sort of not just sort of the environmental impact of it all but so sort of the logistics of it all as well because it, it like it just i'm watching it i'm like wow there's a lot of paperwork in this there's a lot of logistics to sort of actually just you know jumping in the water and pulling out a tire with a rope you know which mm -hmm. it seems simple but really it wasn't yeah and that's it the, the film is kind of you know following the um the ups and downs and the struggles of how hard it is to get this off the ground and you know to start your own not-for-profit and stuff and and um sean always thought that um if he showed the problem that people would just support and the government would support and everything and and i mean eventually they did but it took a couple of years it took a lot longer than he thought and so um it was cool to be able to capture uh the ups and downs as he was, you know, slowly growing this thing, but there's a lot to it. You know, there's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of paperwork and, and, and effort, even the, even like when he brings up these loads of trash and he full, fills his truck, he had to, uh, you know, use his own dump card. He had to spend money at the dump to, to get rid of this stuff. Yeah. You know, and I think that's not happening anymore. I mean, it, it just it's amazing how long it takes for um governments and municipalities and 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 people to get on board to uh to help them with this and i mean it was the pushback that i think really sort of caught my eye as well and was surprising because i mean well i i don't agree with the seal hunt i in my i like logically i can understand sort of the the argument behind it where is the argument behind pulling trash out, out of the water like, yeah. I, like there really was sort of a preconceived sort of pushback against sort of any kind of environmental group sort of in the region, which I think that's the thing that shocked us, shocked me the most. Yeah. Well, we don't want to give anything away so much, um, you know, for, for the viewers Obviously, that, haven't, yeah. that haven't seen it. But um, the issue with the seal hunt is a very contentious issue. Yeah. Here. And I honestly didn't know how crazy it was going to be. And I, I mean, I, I never set out to make a film about the seal hunt or the fishery. It's just, this is the guy that I've followed, you know? And, um, and I didn't write this, you know what I mean? Like he was, they, he was already working with the, with, with IFA, the, the group, which is opposed to the seal hunt. And so, um, the issue wasn't necessarily about taking trash out of the ocean. It was just the fact that IFA uh, got the funding on Sean, Sean's behalf and the government said, man, we don't want IFA here doing anything. And it's pretty crazy, right? I mean, it's like you don't expect that when somebody is trying to do something good to have government interference when it's for, some, for, for a good cause. But, uh, but it ultimately happened. I mean, I think that I think that was sort of my grander point, just sort of the politics behind it all, which really is sort of, I guess, maybe the shocking thing behind just, you know, what you managed to capture. And I'm kind of curious, like during all this, like, was there anything that shocked you? Like, because going in, obviously, you're going to do your research, you're going to prepare. But at the same time, I can imagine there may have been situations where you're like, oh, my God, that's happening. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I grew up in Northern BC. Uh, I married a Newfoundlander and uh, where are you by the way? Toronto. Okay. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, I've spent a quarter of my life here and I love this place. It's in my second home. Um, but you know, I didn't grow up next to the ocean and, but people, multiple people have told us during the making of this, that the ocean was their dumping ground. You know, they used to dump their trash in all the time. And I get it maybe if the ground was frozen or something, but I mean, did you never consider that that's also where your food source comes from? 
Mm. You know, I mean, that's that shocking alone. And um, it just I guess the idea when you go the other thing that's mentioned multiple times in the film is out of sight, out of mind. Everybody knows, you know, you can't see through the water but when you get under there. You know, you can see garbage everywhere on every harbor in, in Newfoundland. If you look on the map, there's a lot of harbors. Mm. I think it's 500. There's over 500 harbors in Newfoundland. And this is one small place in the world but we're part of the world. And so you just do the math and think about, you know, how exponential of a problem this is. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy, man. You know? I mean, I think that's the big pivot in the movie. I mean, I think that's the selling point too. Cause I mean, you can see it in Sean's face, just sort of having that moment of, wait a minute, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was it, was, was he, up for you sort of being in his face 24 7 because i mean obviously he's putting himself through a lot of stress and yeah. a lot of you know financial difficulty at the same time like was he open to not just you know you shooting him diving and seeing all the garbage but seeing sort of the, the low moments during it all as well yeah and that's that's how i pitched it from the beginning i said you know this is this is not just a 90 minute promo for clean harbors initiative this this is a human story you know we want to see how hard it is to get this thing off the ground we want to see how much you put into it and how it affects your your life and your relationships and you know we need to be in your face and i explained it to him up front that this wasn't going to be a a month shoot or a three month shoot. I mean, we're going to follow you for at least a year. And I mean, I think he also understood the power of uh, the medium. You know, I he understood that if this was any good, that it would really you know grow and 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 help him with his awareness and everything. So he he put up with it, kicking and screaming a little bit. You know, uh, Sanine definitely didn't want to be on camera. She told me multiple times, but then she also has like some of the best lines in the film. They just come so natural and she was so candid with us um, about, you know, their financial situation and, and everything and and um, how she's considered leaving many times because of Sean's obsession. But she's, she says, when you love someone, you stick through it. And, yeah. and it was just, um, yeah, it was great to be able to... Um, capture the human side of how hard it is to get something like this off the ground now i mean for you was that sort of the big sort of selling point i mean obviously other than the you know the issues beforehand but it, like how do you transition from like say corporate work or that kind of thing to going okay i'm a filmmaker now yeah it feels yeah. like a bit of a jump yeah i mean i i love what i do i get to work all the time uh on various things i mean right now i'm just i just uh, directed a music video for alan doyle and i'm trying to edit it and get it out the door and and you know i mean it's not all um really small boring stuff but i mean there's a certainly a variety of of things and i've done a few shorts so i do love fiction i want to get back into fiction as well but yeah, committing to something like this is, uh, it was a lot of work, man. It was, I don't know if you've heard the ratio, it's sort of a guesstimate, but it's a hundred to one. You know, you shoot a hundred minutes for every minute that's on screen in a documentary. And you, you know, you, you go down these paths, these rabbit holes and you try stuff and it may or may not work, but you have to try it. So, I mean, we, you know, we edited this thing. We started editing in July, 2020 and we finished in March. I mean, you wow. can imagine how much time that that was and so uh yeah I, I always equate it to like a renovation i've renovated a few houses right and you know the idea of the reno is amazing and the day you start knocking stuff down is amazing and when you're finished and you can walk around and show your friends it's amazing but when you're in the middle of it <laughs> it can be really tough you know and uh you don't you just want it to end but uh you know so it's it just just committing to a, a big project like this was was awesome uh for a, for a change and i i can't wait to do another one is there a moment sort of in the process where where you know you've got it because i mean i can imagine especially sort of in the early going you can be running around shooting and doing stuff but it's like is this going to be a movie i don't know yet yeah well i'll tell you there was one moment and i hope i'm not embarrassing uh, my sound guy here his sweetheart uh scott yates there was a moment when we got the footage because we gave Sean his own camera, right? And right. His, with the microphone attached to it and stuff. And you can see some of that stuff was filmed by Stanin. So when we got the footage from his camera, we were out shooting in Twillingate and I got the little SD card and I put it in the computer. We all stood around and we watched the scene with the orca whale in it. Yeah. And 
there is this is raw footage with no music whatever and i look back and scotty was crying you know it was like you know just heavy and you know that you just at that point you said like wow th- you know this is this is something like this scene alone is worth everything and um you know then you just start putting pieces together and and um you know it's uh i tell people it's a doc is like a puzzle that could be put together a thousand ways and you just never know until you actually get it in uh whether it's gonna work or whether it's any good or whatever and and then you've seen it you know 200 times by the time you finish i even had to watch the full thing again just to just to make sure all the text was right and everything and you're like by the end of it you're going oh my god i don't i don't know if this is any good anymore you know (laughs) um but you have to remember what it felt like the first time it you, you cut it together and, and and then you knew that you had something and and I think that we I think that we do have something. No, and I think you do too and I mean it's one of those things where I mean obviously had everything been ideal right now you'd be in a theater with a the full crowd and doing oh. Q&As and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But on the flip side of that going virtual and going digital almost feels like there's an opportunity to make it even that much more accessible. And I'm kind of curious because on one end, obviously you'd want to be there. You want to be there for Sean. Yeah. But at the same time, this feels like a, a grander platform to try to sort of push out the story at the same time. Like how do you sort of balance the emotion of the two? Yeah. Like woe is me. You know, I'm not the right. only one who has to deal with COVID and, and I don't get to travel for this, but you know, we were even looking forward to going to Technicolor to sit in on the color session. My my DP and I, Troy Marr, you know, we were going to go to Toronto and, you know, I heard they serve lunch there. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... Uh, Post-production on Zoom, man. It's not the same. <laughs> I know, right? And now I'm doing everything from my office chair, which is fine. I'm not, you know, it's, it's, it is the world we're in right now. And maybe even in the next year maybe we will get to go to a couple um there's a couple announced that i can't say yet because they haven't been announced yet but you know a couple big ones right um yeah international festivals so um you know so maybe we'll get to go to them but uh you know releasing it online it's pros and cons i i think that it's cool that we like we're looking for a european distributor right now we have a north american distributor Doc Channel has it in Canada for six years, but then, you know, we're going to try and sell it everywhere else in the world. And that to me now is kind of like the game. Like, how far can we take this? Because I think it's a universal story. It just takes place in small town Newfoundland. And, um, you know, I think it has legs and, and seeing it online. Yeah, there's the beauty of today is there's a lot more um, places that are looking for content. Yeah. And, you know, it's not even really about money. Yes, we are in the film business. I mean, you know, I, I've never lost sight of that. You know, I'm, this is the first, this is my first feature and I am going to try and sell it, but about getting the message across, um, I think we're in a good position in 2021 where there's just, like you said, it, it, it's accessible to so many people. We just need to get those people. Uh, we need to sell it and have it be shown all around the world. No, for sure. And I mean, it's one of those things because, I mean, it is your first feature, but I was so struck by, well, on one end, obviously this is a message movie and the film will manipulate you in certain ways towards that. But at the same time, there was a very distinct sense of knowing when to lay back and just let Sean and sort of everything just kind of happen. And I'm kind of curious, editing, trial and error, 100 to 1, like how do you sort of find that balance? Well, we started off, myself and my editor justin sims who's a a good filmmaker in his own right um we started off by just you know putting those uh sticky notes on the wall and trying to find that arc um and you're not really making up anything you know because it is a doc uh you're just trying to find the arc i mean every film is about usually you know sort of the basis of drama is about one person and what they want and then the things that get in their way you know and um the odyssey or whatever you know and and um so you know we we map that out and we try and follow that and try and uh elaborate on certain parts of that and 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 you know you just try and find the flow but there's a lot of that stuff that got thrown out you know so 
um, yeah, it, it was just trying to find the story and in the time that we had, and uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. No, man, and you should be because I think it's a I think it's a really good film that highlights uh, not just the problem of you know sort of the dumping in the oceans, but just how difficult it can be to solve what should be a seems like on the surface like a fairly simple simple solution but in in reality it isn't and yeah. uh just thank you again for the film and thanks for the time today man no you too I, I just would say there's a lot of things in the world to care about right now you know what i mean and and um a lot of issues that are that are important but then there's also i mean without getting too political because i'm not really i you know i don't i don't I want my water clean and my roads paved and whatever, but I don't really care about politics too much. But then on a global scale, I mean, the amount of money that's been spent on, on weapons and, and, yeah. and defense and all this shit, you know, like if, you know, governments wanted to, I mean, they would just, they could have teams of people cleaning up after, after everyone. And there's so many good initiatives out there that, that, you know, would make the world a better place. And, you know, I never set out to, to, to tell a film that would like solve the world's problems or, 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 or anything, but it was just following a guy who was trying to make a difference and trying to do something about it. And so, but I mean, you know what? Perspective shifts don't happen in sort of big grandiose moments. They happen in incremental little moves. And I think this is one of those little incremental moves and thank yeah. you again for the time, brother. Yeah. You too, man. And, and well, yeah, I appreciate the time, man. Really. All right. Excellent. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and... And Blu-ray needs.